there we go. Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the Correct Views semi feed Ganji doing political commentary for the meme speaks. Hello, check, check, check. Is this mic working? Yes, it is. Very good. You can never be too safe around those things around here. All right, guys. Now that I'm sure that you can hear me, welcome to the show. I usually there's high def running, but lately Christelle has done more sleeping than camera operating, so there isn't going to be any H def. So the low def, you're it. Um, I want to welcome you all aboard, and we're going to do something just a little bit different today. I'm going to let this run behind me while I do it. We're going to go ahead and uh, do a show that you can bring your kids into with you. Bring them into the room. We're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about Christmas. We're going to talk about uh, who Santa Claus really was. And uh, for those of you with little ones, don't worry, we're not going to dispel anything. This is a show to bring your kids in for. This is something different for the correct view. It's all about Christmas. Um, we have some negative things about Christmas. I'll post that later. I want to make sure that this gets seen before Christmas. So everybody come on in. Get your favorite treats. Get ready. And we're going to go ahead. And we're going to talk about who Santa Claus really was. Now, you might want to look this up online. Uh, St. Nicholas of Myra. I'm going to let this run behind me. You can see it on that screen. And we're going to go ahead and talk about exactly who it is that St. Nicholas was. First of all, of course, the name. St. Nicholas of Santa Claus. Uh, St. Claus, which what it originally was when it was abbreviated. Kind of like you may call someone Jimmy, uh, Jim, James. A way of saying St. Nicholas was St. Claus. And you can see where that is right there. Uh, the land was adopted by St. Nicholas. Uh, Maria Santos is uh, where it comes from. And the saints, uh, for those of you who speak the Latin, uh, particularly in the church in Spain. St. Nicholas was a person who was uh, native to Turkey, which meant that he was very likely dark skinned. Um, not quite as round. Some people even said dark. He didn't gain weight until later, and nothing like he's normally portrayed on today. Um, he was known for extreme acts of generosity, such as uh, saving the righteousness of a fairly uh, a couple of girls who had lived in the city of Myra. Uh, what happened was uh, these girls had no money for a dowry. For those of you who may not know, that was the money that was used to get married. If you didn't have that money, then you were forced into a life of slavery and uh, unchast people, and you had no choice but to leave. You didn't have the option of doing anything else. So what St. Nicholas did was he took his own needle and threw it in the window, anonymously. And the people that worked there didn't know any different. He simply knew that he didn't have to sell his daughter into slavery. He had two other daughters. One of the things that made him a saint was in order to be a saint, you have to have had a few confirmed miracles that had happened. Uh, when he was born, there were certain days that he did things that had never been before. But the most, the most stunning miracle that he did, or perhaps anyone had done, and um, it's important to note that this miracle was documented, that it was witnessed. Um, imagine if someone said they went down to the, uh, the local restaurant and Let's say McDonald's. They went to McDonald's and they brought somebody back from the dead. Well, that person was lying. It would be rather easy to prove it because a number of people would say, no, I was there. That didn't happen at all. It was very hard, particularly in the days before the Internet. We're talking about here. It's very difficult to pull off a lie in magic. What I'm talking about is they, uh, three children went to an inn work and requested food and the innkeeper and his wife had graciously given it to them. Unbeknownst to the children, they were killed and uh, put into a barrel as meat. And uh, of course, that was as repulsive back then as it is now. Seven years passed before St. Nicholas had come to the inn and he was moved in the spirit to ask about the, he wanted meat from the very barrel that the 
children as a uh, put in. The innkeeper ran from the place to Santa Claus. St. Nicholas forgave him and raised the children from the dead, from the ground. And of course, uh, raise it, we all know that uh, acts like that are deemed saintly when they are one of the miracles uh, to be seen foretold by Christ. Um, of course, uh, becoming saint, or we know that he exists, we know that he was a real person. Uh, he was in the Council of Lycia. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's one of the most important meetings of uh, mine and all of uh, Christian history. It is, it's where they decided the divinity of Christ. They decided whether or not he was fully God and fully man. And uh, Santa Claus was so adamant about the truth and the divine nature of Christ that after much haggling for many, many months with a uh, fellow bishop who did not believe very much, it is documented that St. Nicholas struck the man in righteous indignation. He slapped him. This may be where a lot of the rumor comes from, of course, of the Krampus, which, of course, in Austria was said to travel with St. Nicholas to punish bad children. This is where it goes into legend. Uh, prior to this, everything I've told you is actually historical fact. Um, we know for sure that Santa Claus, uh, St. Nicholas, was buried in uh, Myra. The body was removed, believed to have been stolen. And the reason that they took it was because um, Islamists, a fashion, or the equivalent of the ISIS today, uh, they were a problem in that time as well. He was around, uh, he died in the third century. Right around the 10th century, I want to say 1087, he was uh, his body was stolen from its original burial place in Myra and moved to Italy. Well, the reason for that was because, much like ISIS does today, where they destroy ancient relics, wonderful art, uh, pieces of antiquity in the past, he was buried in Italy. Um, they moved it so that the Islamists, the equivalent of terrorists today, would not destroy the tomb. And they stole the body, and they wanted a church built to it. And to this day, between 70 and 75 percent of Santa Claus's bones reside in Italy. Some are in the original tomb in Myra. And again, uh, we know that uh, the Council of Lycia listed him as an actual member. We know that it was. Uh, we know that a number of sailors have said that they had reported him and that he calmed the sea, another one of the miracles found in the Bible. Um, descriptions of him tend to match up very well. Historically, the historical record for him is very strong. So he really was a mystery. He was a very real person and he was a very good person. When he died, uh, how many of you would know about the, uh, this happened about, I want to say within the last 30 or 40 years, St. John of San Francisco was an Orthodox saint. And he was such a good person that his body has never rotted. It doesn't rot. It was never embalmed. It was never cured in any way. The body sits in a church and doesn't rot. You can pick it up. It's St. John of San Francisco. You can pick it up very easily or you can just go and see him because he is, after all, a divine power. Um, something similar happened many, many um, centuries, uh, decades, centuries went on in, uh, in for the death of St. Nicholas. His body um, exhumed myrrh. For those of you with a touch of history, you know that uh, frankincense, myrrh, gold, silver, and a few other precious items were given to Christ on his birth. It is said that this myrrh healed a number of illnesses and diseases. And the interesting thing about this was quackery was very big at that time. So um, if something didn't work, it spread very, very quickly. Um, snake oil sales did not get very far in that time period. Uh, if something didn't work and someone died, it was well known. Um, his bones literally bled or oozed myrrh upon his body. Now, there's actually a jar of the myrrh in the museum that uh, is now part of his resting place in Italy. Um, year 
years later, of course, we all know um, that Santa Claus was somewhat reprinted in a story that an author wrote for his ailing daughter. That is where we get many of the stories that we get today. But even many years ago, nuns would give out candy on Christmas Eve, and it became a legend that Santa Claus had come in many instances. So you, you, would, it, you would find candy in his shoes if you were good. You would find salt in his shoes if you were believed to be too old to be doing the same things. And you would receive a broom if you were a bad child. Also, uh, again, the rumor of a Krampus that you would get to uh, punish some kind of rather severely disobedient children. That, my friends, is the actual story of Santa Claus. That is historically correct who St. Nicholas is. And uh, he was to the church. So when you hang your stocking by the chimney with care, and you talk about St. Nicholas coming, I hope you realize with great joy exactly who it is that he was and what he was doing. And the genuine uh, kind-heartedness that came with it. And uh, this carries on today. It, it's not completely vanished from modern society or modern world anyway. But I thought this was nice. Listen to this. New America. Moving examples of generosity this Christmas season. Each Christmas. The American people showcase their generosity with incredible stories of charity and giving. Now listen to this. One of them comes out of Cumming, Georgia, where a waitress at Red Robin named American Works was seen with extremely generous so that she could give her daughter a special Christmas. She's a single mother. She's worked at the Red Robin in sense for years. And she had mentioned with some regular customers that she had a four-year-old daughter. On a $4.27 dollar check. They left her a $200 tip. Um, they did it so that she could get her daughter an Elsa doll from Ruby Frozen. And since the doll is uh, quite a bit less than $200, it's, uh, it, it will allow her to cover other expenses during the holiday season because the doll is worth more than my house. They were able to make the Christmas better than ever expected, let's say. On Monday, I really hope that I can do something. Another inspiring story. I don't even know if this might be on here. But another inspiring story comes from the Grand Junction, Colorado, where pop music icon Taylor Swift, her music is terrible, but this is awesome, surprised a young cancer patient with an early Christmas present by carving out some time off of her schedule for a December 19th visit. Delaney Clements, age 13, moved into hospice care days after a five-year-long battle with cancer. This is awful. When you go to hospice, oftentimes you don't use it, you don't get out. Billboard.com reports that Clements had developed a following on Instagram after she was diagnosed in 2010. Delaney caught Swift's attention after Delaney began uh, to trend on Twitter with the pound Delaney sign. On the 19th, a Clements recalls that she was preparing to take a nap when her mother said that she had a fever. Expecting the visitor to be a friend or family member, Delaney was stunned to discover that the visitor was Taylor Swift. Um, and they exchanged Instagram messages and took selfies. Selfies is something that is uh, very moving to a child. I'm literally speechless right now, she wrote uh, on her Instagram. My new best friend is I'm going to call her as made a special trip on the way to come and see her. Um, back in Northwest Delaware, strangers in Camden, Delaware, scraped together enough money to give veterans special Christmas surprise. Um, James Pack suffered a heart attack in September and forced him to be hospitalized for several days. Delaware State News reports, with no more care for his two dogs, he ended up, uh, they were dogs were taken by the SPCA. After the heart attack, he suffered an infection that was rendered the left side of his throat paralyzed and his left side. He could barely speak, but he regularly called to check on his dogs. When he found out it was going to cost him $210 to get them out when he got out early this month in December, he said he was going to sell his car. The people there raised the money to get his dogs out so that when he came back, they didn't, he didn't, I hope he didn't sell his car. They, he didn't need to give them the check. They gave him personalized dog biscuits and they gave him a, uh, they basically paid for everything that the dog would need 
Christ's son died. And you can see a video of him throwing his hands heavenward with great joy. Um, more inspiration, Central PA, where an anonymous donor made Christmas a little brighter by for struggling families. On December 14th, I mean, it was like nine days ago, Secret Santa paid off $180,000 worth of layaway items at two different Pennsylvania Walmarts, one in Silver Springs Township and the other in Swatara, Pennsylvania, last year. The anonymous donor, known only as Santa B, has started to make a habit of this, having paid off $50,000 worth of layaways last year. According to Stephen Myers, store manager at the Silver Spring location, Santa B stated that his business was successful and that he wanted to give back to the community. And that was from between three to 400 layaways. Um, Tracy Foltz told ABC 27 that it had been a tough year and she had gone to cancel her layaway and she wanted to thank whoever did that. Uh, so we're not devoid of Christmas joy today. It's just that you're not allowed to talk about it. We're supposed to be so unbelievably politically correct. Well, you know what? I'm not going to do that. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and uh, make this more appropriate. We'll, we'll change the lower third. Why? Because we're not around. We'll leave it up. Now it's already on. Friends, there are so many things that are going on. Uh, Texas restaurant chain touts politically incorrect holiday policy. ABCnews.go.com. This is wonderful news. Epic win right here. Epic, epic win. Listen to this. One restaurant chain in Texas is warning customers that it may offend them by being too politically incorrect this holiday season. I just got tired of the news. Everybody having to be politically correct. Barry Hill Baja Grill CEO Jeff Hannon told ABC News, so make sure you go to Barry Hill Baja Grill. The chain restaurant posted signs outside its nine Texas locations about two weeks ago that read, Notice, the store is politically incorrect. We say Merry Christmas, God bless America. We salute our flag and give thanks to our troops, police officers, and firefighters. If this offends you, you are welcome to leave. God we trust. God bless him. Annan said that the news, or excuse me, that the last straw for him was the criticism often we heard on the news that erupted in social media last month over Starbucks red holiday themed coffee cups. We covered that here. Look up correct use of Starbucks coffee cup. There's nothing wrong with saying Merry Christmas in lieu of Happy Holidays. When people say Merry Christmas, they're being nice, Annan said, adding that he's Jewish. We're not trying to be politically incorrect or have religious beliefs. The restaurants have been decorated with festive holiday decor, including Hanukkah decorations, and Anna said that for every negative response to the signs, there are hundreds of positive ones. I bet there are. It's a microcosm of why Trump is so evil. Look at that sign there on the back. The outpouring of support has been absolutely terrific. We're actually getting a lot of requests from people to get the signs that some people say that you shouldn't take religion into the workplace. We're not trying to bring religion into the workplace. It has nothing to do with religion. It is the spirit of the holidays. So way to go there. Make sure you go to Barry here, Baja Grill, and let uh, CEO Jeff Annan know. He's amazing. And friends, that does, in fact, bring us to the dum dee dum dee dum dee of the day. The dum dee of the day. Yes. If I still have anyone listening, it, again, I, I don't talk down to children. You notice the way I gave the Santa Claus report. I was tactful, but I don't talk down to children. Well, I'm also not going to pretend it's only children that play video games. Uh, I love video games. Um, my, my wife, Christelle, all she does is video games. 24-7, her phone is video games. Well, let this be a warning to you as our dummy of the day or news.yahoo.com. Gamer sues Bethesda after losing his life and job to Fallout 4 addiction. That is a game, for those of you that don't know. No matter how much time you've spent with Fallout 4 since it launched the last month, it probably has, in, has a big impact on your life, as it has one gamer from Prince to Urshan. According to the report from RT, the 28-year-old man is suing Bethesda, the developer of the game, for 500,000 rubles, about seven grand, after losing his job at Bethesda. Why? He says that he didn't know that the game could be so addictive. Apparently, after seeing an advertisement for the game, 
The man quickly downloaded it and spent a few hours playing it over the next few days. Those days quickly turned into weeks, and after missing several days of work, he was fired from his job. His friends stopped hearing from him, his sleeping and eating habits deteriorated, and his wife left him in just a few weeks, no less. So it must have, you know, just been the game. If I knew that this game could become so addictive, I would have become a lot more wary of it. I would not have bought it. I would not have left it until the holiday or until the New Year's. This man said in a statement, why don't you just shut the game off? It's real easy. Don't turn it on. Although there have been similar cases around the world in the past, this is the first for Russia. It's a law firm representing the fallout poor addict is going to see if he can, what he can do regarding the case. In other words, he was too stupid to shut the game off and is trying to blame somebody other than himself. That, friends, is in fact the dumdy dumdy of the day. Do me a favor, friends. You can donate to the show if you want to at the correct views of hotmail.com. Every penny you give to me goes towards a better show. Do make sure you share it with one and all. Let people know I'm out of here. Let people know the show is going on. And Merry Christmas. Good night. God bless. Brought to you by Change Transportation.